Yo, Raphael at an S compared to like the triple S's up here. I can now certify that this tier list is 100% correct. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be reviewing a tier list. And so massive shout out to Ancient Spark for this tier list. I think this tier list is probably the closest thing to like perfect. And it's because for me personally, like the approach that he takes is very, very, uh, well, I guess not really scientific. How do you say it? It's, uh, it's very, very methodical and very well thought out. And on top of that, he actually has like very, very good explanations and descriptions for the rationale for each of the characters. And so again, let's go back and shout out to Ancient Spark one more time because I think like of all tier lists from like every single game, this is probably one of the best tier lists that I've like ever seen. And so without further ado, let's jump into the guidance criteria, which is probably the part that I like the most because essentially this is all of the different conditions or like the methodology that he followed to come to the conclusions. And for the most part, I agree with pretty much like everything that is written in here, except I saw this and I was like, hmm. Oh, moderate niche, primary teleport. I don't know about you guys, but I love my teleports. But like, if he can convince me, he can convince me. Just the fact that the teleport is on par with sniping. Oh, I don't know about that one, my man. But I'm just a lowly wannabe YouTuber. Who cares what I think? And on the other ones, it's looking pretty good. However, let me take a step back and let's go through this properly. And so what he's saying here, old mate Patrick, Patrick is pretty much saying, well, let's take a character and let's see what exactly they're good at. What is their niche? It's pretty much like the purpose that you take a character into battle. So for example, we have Icy and Icy's niche is 100% four tile preemptive conversion. It's not that freaking sniping thing that she does on the chain combo. You take her in for the conversion and that is essentially how like this has been evaluated. And so all of these like role fulfillments, he's pretty much ranked them from top to bottom. So we've got the critical niches down to the weak ones. And for the most part, I agree. Like you got the preemptive conversions over here and then you've got like more preemptive conversions. And then all the way at the bottom, you've got non-healing defense Defenses, enemy CC, enemy movement. I pretty much have been saying this kind of stuff for like the last few months. It's like the paralyzers or the stuns or whatever. They're kind of like meh. But yeah, so this is essentially how he's evaluating it from top to bottom. These are the most important niches. And so guys, I'm not going to read through the rest of this, but I do want to say, I do want to point out uh, this guy over here. And so what it says is that this tier list mostly assumes Spire and Elysium as its focuses. And so what that means is that it's probably going to have a heavy emphasis on like like the dots as well as the big damage by the detonators. And so what we are going to see is like some kind of, uh, I would call it a little bit of an inflated ranking. And what I mean by that is I'm talking about like the Leona, the Pasolo, the uh, the rat guy. You guys know the rat guy, right? Like the rat guy that like throws a bunch of mines, like five mines in a cross shape. Anyway, we'll get into that later. And so with that being said, let's jump into the next tab, which is just an FAQ. But again, you guys can read this in your own time. However, I do want to point this one out. So the detonator plus two converters plus plus two flex. Generally speaking, this is going to be your team composition and it is the composition that he's kind of like making the assumptions for. All right. And so with that being said, let's move on to the tier list itself. And so, whoop, I was hiding the triple S's. Surprise. Okay. So we've got the triple S's down to like the D's. Oh man, that's kind of sad, man. And then on top of that, we've got like the different elements over here. All right. So let's just have a look at this at a glance. And <laughs> what you're going to find is Nikki over here. It's so funny because at the start of the game and me included, again, I cannot stop apologizing for this but there are just so many people who are like oh man nikki is so trash nikki is so bad and then now you have me here sitting without nikki begging for a nikki banner and for you guys who keep up with the latest news we might be getting a nikki banner coming up in the next month maybe in the next two weeks or something something like that right it's just word on the street i am talking out of my butt i do not have anything to corroborate my claims but i'm just saying you know we just had a grand rue triple r banner and so nikki is not completely out of the question anyway moving back over here so so triple S, so what we're going to anticipate is probably a lot of the conversions. And so that is exactly what's going on here. Icy, Sario, Gronru, Nikki, and then the five star counterparts. And then on top of that, we have these bad boys over here. Maggie, Barton, Nemesis, Sikari, aka your cross converters. Now, originally I was like, I don't know about this one. This, this one ain't it. But then I saw this bad boy over here with breakthroughs as a five star. And so in my opinion, that makes complete sense because without the breakthroughs, they're freaking doo-doo. Even getting the first 
dupe on the cross converters is so big because of like the CD decrease. Getting the CDs reduced from five to four is already really massive. But in my opinion, and I think this is a pretty generally accepted opinion, it's that the true power spike for these four cross converters is at max breakthrough when you can use it preemptively. Because as we saw in Endgame, like these cross converters pretty much enables one hit comps and you kind of need it at the very start. Anyway, moving on, let's have a look at these guys over here. So we've got Sinsa and Michael at triple S on their own. And on top of that, they have no conversion abilities. And so the reason that Sinsa and Michael are in here is because I believe, and I think uh, old mate Patrick also believes, that among the detonators, which are already a pretty broken class, they are probably standing at the very top. And then so you're going to have people saying like, oh, what about Caron? What about Sharona? What about Regal? What about, uh, not Revy? But yeah, the other old mates, right? It's that Sinsa has that freaking diagonal defense down. And then as for Michael, he's got a teleport AOE damage dealing everything in between start and end. But on top of that, he also does percentage HP damage, which is massive, especially in the context of Elysium. All right, and so I hope that lines up with what he says in these like documents over here. It'd be really freaking awkward if it didn't. But when I saw these two names here, Sinsa and Michael, that's the kind of rationale that I use to place them up here. Now then a couple of you are going to be like, oh, what about Caron? Everyone's like, oh, Caron OP, right? Caron is good. Caron is really, really freaking good, but he doesn't have the Sinsa capability. Caron is essentially like a selfish DPS, but in the context of Elysium, where all of the mobs have high HP, as well as some like really busted defensive stats, that's why Sinsa and Michael are sitting up here. And it's really sad, right? Because Caron actually has a lot going for him. He has a displacement, which is actually really big sometimes. I don't know about you guys, but in Endgame, you know that little dude, like the, the boss little guy, I can't remember her name, but essentially it's the one that fires a laser from like across the map and she also has her big friend. Anyway, with that stage with Caron, I was like using the displacement skill to actually move her down and then like chunk her in one go. However, again, this tier list is not evaluated with Endgame in mind. It is evaluated with the Elysium. And so that is why Caron, Graham, Sharona, Regal, all of these bad boys are down here. It's sad, you know, it's sad, but it is what it is. And then moving through, we've got Iridan, we've got Rev, we've got Schwartz, we've got Tessa, mm, looking real freaking good. And then we've got Odi, Araya, Sakare. So, okay, let's talk about these ones first. Odi, triple S minus, Sakare, triple S minus. I think especially the Odi, there are going to be times where she is not going to thrive. And that's pretty much like the non Elysium or like the non high HP times. If you're versing like normal mobs or even like normal boss mobs that don't have like the high HP, chances are your detonators or like your normal DPSs are going to do better than Odi. Araya, on the other hand, I believe really deserves this spot. She is, she is absolutely cracked, dudes. And then coming over here, we've got Schwartz. So Schwartz is really fantastic because he's kind of like Michael Light. He also does percentage HP damage. And so it's very obvious why he's here. As for Revy, <sighs> Revy is a tough one, right? Because I have Revy and I have a lot to say about Revy in this event. So stay tuned for the next video. But essentially Revy is like ultra, ultra niche, right? In my opinion, she's not going to be reliable in every single setting like Sharona or Regal or Caron will be. And so I think the SS minus is pretty appropriate, if not like an S plus. Like we got Paul Beryl down here at an S plus. I would say Beryl might even be comparable to Revy. But anyway, that's just my thoughts on Revy. I, I feel like they are showing her off a little bit too much. Anyway, let's go on to Sharona, Regal, Caron, Graham. I think these are just fantastic detonators. Uh, double S, fair enough. Yes, Sinsa and Michael are a cut above them. All right, Iridan. Now, Iridan is an interesting one because she's of an archetype which should be highly valued, but is like a little bit less valued. At Breakthrough Zero, she gives you up to six tiles, but like it does need a little bit of brain power. And so I can kind of understand as to why like she sits below these guys, but really with these four tile preemptive converters, you're still kind of constrained, right? And so in my opinion, maybe Iridan is like a double S plus or a triple S minus. All right, moving down, Tessa, you guys don't need an introduction to her. She is so freaking cracked. Very commonly referred to as a six star and disguised as a four star. She just does massive damage. I think this is completely appropriate. Now let's go. Victoria, Carleen, Requiem, Hero. Okay. I think that all of these are appropriate. However, playing with Requiem for a bit, she seems like okay. Me personally, I didn't find her like utterly fantastic. 
fantastic. Like, I think Regal is freaking sick, but Requiem is kind of like, okay, so-so. She just didn't do as much damage as I thought she would. However, I was using her probably in the wrong setting, which is the uh, current event, Doomfire Strike. Anyway, Victoria, she's awesome. She has massive AoE. She's got bleed and she's got heal. And then we've got Carleen over here. Okay, so this is a really interesting one. I think that Carleen deserves a higher spot if you have breakthroughs on her. She's rated at an SS minus, and I would say she would be probably maybe an SS plus if she was like at breakthrough three. Otherwise, I think Hero here is appropriate. I think Midgard Mythos. Okay. Everyone already knows Midgard is quite strong. However, I would say I would take Hero over Midgard any day. And that is unfortunately just the nature of the game. Midgard is really freaking cracked, but like Hero is a detonator. And unfortunately, for the most part, in my opinion, detonators are just stronger than snipers generally. And so that is pretty much the only thing that's holding Midgard back. But like if Midgard was a detonator, then she wouldn't be Midgard then, right? And as for Mythos, unfortunately, I've not played her enough to evaluate her. All right, moving on. We got Phyllishai at the double S. You know what? All right, I'll take that. I am a massive fan of Phyllishai. You guys already know it. But I do recognize that she is not triple S tier. She is not like ultra, ultra, ultra important. All right, and then coming down, we've got the Isvan, Hydrad, and Luis with the double S with breakthroughs as five stars. I think that this is acceptable for similar reasons for like this one over here. I think what a lot of people are going to tell you is like Isvan, if you don't have Isvan, you're never going to pass like Spire 89 or Elysium 4 or whatever it was. But again, from the high level Spire Elysium context, yeah, I would agree with this one. All right, let's move down. Oh, here. Okay, we got Leona, Maggie, Benny, and Kuro. So Maggie, Bart, and Nemesis, and the last one, Sakare. Sakare is up here instead. Okay, that's pretty respectable because Sakare does like, does quite a fair bit of damage, especially when compared to the other ones over here. So I think that, <laughs> what the frick? Oh, wow. Tiny one, tiny one as an S, as well as Unimit. Okay, that is actually super interesting because I have seen a lot of other tier lists which just crushes tiny one and Unimit. I think between giving them like a D tier versus an S tier, I would say that tiny one and Unimit are probably S tier rather than D. The small, simple utility that they just provide is so freaking good. Like, because honestly, without these two characters, a lot of different strategies, especially like the low requirement strategies, they, they just wouldn't work. And so I 100% respect these two over here. However, <laughs> dang, wow, Smokey, Raphael, Eve, <sighs> okay, you know what? Fair enough. Smokey, unfortunately, I feel it just got like straight up power crept by Graham. In a way, I would say that she is probably at the same tier as these guys over here. But honestly, there might even be room to move her down to like an S minus A plus kind of thing. And speaking of Smokey, it's reminding me of like Uriel and Gabriel, who I am not seeing. But in my opinion, Uriel and Gabriel probably sit at this part as well. I reckon Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, they're all kind of like the same archetype. And what I mean by the same archetype is that you need the breakthrough three to make them really work. And if they did have breakthrough three, I would say that they are SS. However, at breakthrough zero, I would say that they are like S minus maybe. Unfortunately, at breakthrough zero, they're just not like overly impactful. And unfortunately, they're just not strong enough for me to say that they are like ultra, ultra good. And it's freaking hilarious, right? Because like a whole bunch of people at launch were saying like, oh man, Raphael is the reroll target. And back then I was looking at Raphael and I was like, what, what, what is so good about Raphael? It's not like she can do anything like spectacular. She can't like truly, truly convert. She can't like truly, truly heal. And her damage is kind of like, huh? and so that's kind of how I feel about Gabrielle and Uriel as as well. They're all kind of like, um, uh, like meh. Now we've got Korax up here, fantastic damage dealer, I agree. And then we've got Miss Blanc here at an S. So, okay. This one is pretty interesting. I think this is pretty appropriate because Miss Blanc as an S, unfortunately, she doesn't have like any smarts to her tile conversion. And what I mean by that is that Miss Blanc unfortunately converts like the immediate four up, down, left, right tiles to her. And so what this means is that she can get you up to four blue tiles, not f like four blue tiles for sure. On the other hand, you've got these preemptive guys up here who are gonna guarantee you four tiles as long as like their targets are on the field. And so with all of that rationale, I completely get why Miss Blanc is down here. Here. All right, moving on. We've got Eve. We've got Jonah, Fleur. I see a lot of snipers here and it's kind of like for the same reasons as like Midgard. They're just being held back by the fact that they are snipers. It's like, ugh, I'm sorry guys, you can't help the way that you're born, right? But all that being said, I do think that Midgard is a cut above them. All right, moving on. We've got Pasolo. We've got Nails. Ooh, this is interesting. I would say that in the context of Elysium, they are probably higher than this and Leona as well. I, I would say that they're actually higher than an S. In general, General use, I would like completely crush them down, but like for Elysium and High Spire, 
Mm. All right, and so we got. Oh, okay. Uriel is over here, but where's Gabriel? Oh, Ga oh my God, Gabriel got crushed. Okay, okay. You know what? I I, I respect that. I I agree. I agree. All right, and moving on, we've got Chloe, who has quite a good utility. I would agree there. And then Kafka and Nadine and then Uriah, who I would also agree with. Nadine and Uriah are just like two really freaking strong healers, especially when compared to Alice. Like pre-nerf Alice, rip Alice, big rip, big Fs for Alice. Pre-nerf Alice, I reckon she was like, if not an S, then an S plus or an S, S minus. Freaking having a death defying ability is just insane, man. But alas, she got gimped and so she is sitting in A, which makes sense. And so with that, it also makes sense that Nadine and Uriah sit a cut above her. As for Kafka, she is just a really solid unit. She does really respectable damage. And so moving down and um, oh god, okay this video is getting a bit too long so I might speed run the rest. I think for these ones, let's just have a look at some of the interesting ones and call it a day. Alright, we've got Frostfire over here which is an A+. I completely agree. Unfortunately she just does not have the power that like she was expected to have. And then on top of that, this is post buff Wrath at an A-. minus. And honestly, I agree with that as well. I think her uh, her active is just way too long. All right, then we've got Taki, Reggie, and Barbara. Oh, this is interesting because a lot of people used to rank Barbara at the same level as Isvan, which is still technically true because Isvan is down here. Okay, fair enough. So with Isvan, Hydrat, and Luis over here, I agree with no breakthroughs. And the reason that I agree is just because like there is quite a fair bit of setup that is required to go around these guys. Then a couple of key callouts. We've got Brock and Keating. I respect that because like their niche is cool, but it's not for Elysium. Zoya over here, unfortunately just outclassed by Phyllishai. Phyllishai kind of just like kills everybody. And then moving down, oh my god, Connolly just got absolutely gimped. Man, people really do think that Connolly is like the worst character in the game, or rather the worst six star in the game. I don't know if that is the case. Oh look, there's the rat. I would have thought that he'd be placed a little bit higher, but B+, plus, why not an A? Hmm? Why not an A? Alright, and so just looking through these, uh, okay, Noah is where he should be. And in the context of Elysium, okay, you know what? Fine, Connolly, okay, fine. Connolly is a B. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to remember that this is Elysium specific. And to be honest, what I would really like to see is kind of more like a general use kind of guide. Because in my opinion, like this tier list would probably change quite a fair bit for general use. But yeah, just looking through the rest of them, it looks fine to me. But I think the more important units are the ones up here, which which I pretty much like completely agree with. All right, well, that wraps that one up. Hopefully I didn't speed run the end too hard. I just think that this is a fantastic tier list because if you go into these ones, he actually goes in depth for every single character. Look at this. He even talks about the Sinsa and Charon. So wait, so let's see him from right. So yeah, guys, just read through this. I think this is really, really good. It's also got the final rating and like some of the ratings in their own niches because I do agree that IC is probably one of the better preemptive four tile converters. And if I to look at another one. So Faust A in own niche. Yeah, I would also agree with that. Faust, he just kind of sucks outside of his conversion ability. But yeah, all of the detail, everything is in here. I hope it aligns with what I'm saying because if not, I'm going to look like a real big freaking clown. But otherwise, that's my thoughts generally on like this tier list over here. I think it is very, very well put together. I agree with the majority of it. I do think that some of these can have like pluses or minuses. So I think that like Sharona is a plus on top of Regal. Like for for God's sake, Sharona can fly around the map. Like, can Regal? I don't think that Iridan and Revy can be classified in the same way, so that SS minus is very appropriate. But yeah, all in all, a fantastic tier list. Again, thank you to Ancient Spark for putting it together. And so now that we are at the end of the tier list, or like as far as I could get anyway, you guys need to let me know how you feel about this tier list. Did you guys feel like some people were, or some of the units were poorly rated? Do you think that Raphael deserves to be triple S because she's freaking cute? No, nope, don't drop that comment because because we already know what the answer is. But gather your thoughts and let me know down in the comments below how you feel about all of this. And honestly, that would mean a lot to me because it means that you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much for that. But otherwise, please consider a sub, a like, a follow, a comment, you already know what it is. Support the channel, affiliate links, membership button, description below. But otherwise, as Patrick once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.